Hey guys, welcome back. I went and picked up the parts for the Tetris cabinet this afternoon. Um, I just got home seven o'clock at night. So what I wanna do is this is the power supply and the JAMA harness that was in the cabinet when I originally took the cabinet apart. So what I wanna do is get this plugged in, see if it works. And then I want to plug the board in and we're going to have to use a converter board because we're using a 19 inch LCD computer monitor. So we're going to have to set up this converter board and uh, adjust it to work with this Tetris circuit board. It is an original Tetris circuit board. So the first thing I want to do is this is a metal table. So I stuck this moving blanket on the metal table because I didn't want you obviously don't want your circuit board to be laying on metal because you're going to short it out. So first thing I want to do is let's get the power to this, turn it on, check our voltages before we plug anything in. Um, so basically there is a power wire here, a cord that it came with. Um, I need to put these shrink end, crimp end fittings on here with the shrink tube. So we're going to put that on first. They had these wire nutted together in the cabinet, so we're going to hook them up a little better than that. Actually, I think I'm going to need the blue ones of these. Eh, maybe it works. Yeah, I think it fits. And basically, all I'm really worried about tonight is I'd like to get it working on the bench here. And then we could put it in the cabinet. But I don't really feel like putting it all in the cabinet and then having to uh, try to get it working and everything. I usually like to do this step out of the cabinet as much as possible. Now, um, this monitor should sit normal. Uh, I don't think it needs to flip, be flipped sideways or anything like that. But... While it's out of the cabinet, we'll just set it all up here on the bench. And at least that way, if it needs to be rotated or something, or if something needs adjusted, we can do it here. And then I know where to mount the monitor into the cabinet, which direction, which, like I said, should be normal direction. So I'm going to heat these up and shrink these down. You always want to make sure you hook up your ground, too, because... If you don't have a grounded outlet, that's never a good thing because you want to have your game grounded to your outlet. If that is broken off that tab on the plug end, then you should put a new plug end on. And also I recommend running um, surge protector or um, fuses, you know, so that the fuses can you can blow a fuse before you screw something else up, but uh, usually just a power strip, a good power strip that can handle a lot of power with a surge protector built in is pretty much going to be just fine using that. Okay, now this um, old style cord here. Both sides are black, so it doesn't really tell me which one's hot and which one's not. I'm pretty sure I can follow it. You know, no, they're both the same size. Okay, um, so basically it doesn't really matter. I've hooked them up both ways and never had a problem with it. Um, this plug right here we need to plug in. This is the power cord for the converter board. So we need to put that onto the five volts and to the ground. Um, you cannot hook it up to 12 volts. It has to be 5 volts. Okay, so we have those hooked up. So that's ready to get plugged in. Um, let's hook up these two wires. 
Like I said, one goes to ground, one goes to five volts. And I'm putting them on the opposite side because there's a lot on that side, so I don't want to overwhelm it. Okay, so we have that. So technically, we can plug this in and we can test for voltages right off the power supply first. And I need to verify that these brown wires are ground, these red wires should be five volts, the orange wire should be 12 volts or maybe negative. Let me see here. Okay, orange is negative, yellow is 12, red is five volts, and the ground wires are brown, so we are good to go there. All right, let's plug this in. Got my multimeter here so we can check our voltages because the only you don't want to go plugging one of these things in and it work, but it send like eight volts to your circuit board because then you're just going to screw your circuit board up. Okay. There's no light on this power supply because it's old. 5.16. That's right at the thing, so let's check it here at the harness. Five point one six. I'm gonna leave it there. I don't. Um, I don't think that's too high. Um, so now we need to plug this in to. Let me unplug this. We need to plug this into the converter board here. Okay. And then we have to take our signal wires from the monitor, which are right here that have already been spliced together. I'm trying to see how they did this. I'm guessing red, green, blue. I don't know if that's ground or sink or what. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is cut these off right here and we are going to use this one that comes with one of the converter boards and we're going to have to connect them together with uh, these uh, connectors and then shrink them at least then I gotta check the colors on the harness this is an old JAMA harness which I don't mind because I honestly think the older ones were built better. The wires are thicker. They're not like a lot of these Chinese ones that you buy. I'm gonna have to go grab some connectors. Now, if I remember correctly, red, green, blue, these gray and yellow are both sink wires. Now, sometimes you have to use the gray, sometimes you have to use the yellow, sometimes you use them both. Sometimes you have to put a resistor in the line of the sink wire to get some of the uh, waviness out of the bottom of the screen. Um, I actually need to do that to my Simpsons bowling game. Um, I have a little bit of a wave at the bottom of the screen from one of these converter boards and I cannot get rid of it. And I remember reading somewhere that you can put a resistor in line but I don't remember what size it was. Um, I think I took a screenshot of it. I'll have to look through my phone and see if I have a screenshot of what it is in case I need it for this game, but I definitely want to use it to fix my game in the basement. So I need to untangle this mess here. Great. What the hell is that? Trying to find my video wires here. I'm not seeing, there's two browns. Kind of have to go off of this old one here. Looks like they were using brown as a sink. They had both sink wires connected to the one sink wire coming from the harness. 
And then, uh, okay, let me go grab a couple crimp connectors. Or, yeah, let's crimp them together. I know that the red, green, blue, and the ground are going to be correct. So we can at least get those done. And then the sink wire, we'll just twist it together in case we need to switch it. Okay, let's start with putting the, we're gonna put the ends on these four. We'll leave the two sink wires off. Cause I don't wanna go crimping an end on there and then having to switch it. And then I just wasted a crimp connector. And you can solder these, you know, soldering is a really good, obviously the best connection you're gonna get, but I've had really good success with these. And when the shrink tube goes around it, it really holds them on. Okay, now let's go over to the factory harness here. We have our blue, red, and green. Kind of just doing this live without starting and stopping the camera. Let's see how long it takes me to do it. Hopefully this converter board cooperates with this board. Sometimes they're really finicky and they're a pain in the ass to adjust, but hopefully we'll get lucky with this one but we shall see. Okay, so those three are connected. I need to connect the ground, which is the black on here, and then I'm pretty positive that the darker brown on here is my ground, because this lighter brown is my sink. Okay, it's more like a gray brown. Okay, this is our ground here. You can use a lighter on these too, but the lighter tends to burn the plastic. The heat gun kind of uh, more evenly melts it too. And it doesn't make it all black or brown looking. The pole position I delivered on on Saturday, and the guy loves it. He put it in his basement, I believe, said everything was working good. So that was a success. Now he's looking for a, um, a Q-Bert. He wants to do a restore on a Q-Bert cabinet. I have not had any success finding a Q-Bert cabinet. Um, if anybody has one that's for sale and wants to sell one, for a reasonable price, let me know. 
and I can forward it to him and see if he's interested. Um, I've used Fastenal quite a few times to ship games and I've had really good luck with them, but I've only shipped games that have needed restored. I've never shipped a game that was already restored or anything, so I can't verify, you know, if it would get damaged or not by it being shipped. So this is our sink wire. Oh wait, that's our ground wire. This is our sink wire. For now, let's just put it on the yellow. And we'll just twist it together for now. And if that doesn't work, we can switch it. Okay, that's done. Now we can plug this in. This has a notch on it. It can only get plugged in one direction. Plug it in right here. Now on this board, before I plug that in, this connector right here will work with the normal uh, connector that comes on a JAMA harness. It'll plug right into there usually. But they give you a couple different options for plugs. And then I can see on this converter board, I have a ton of these that are used. And I can see that the red, green, and blue have all been kind of jacked up because this is a red, green, and blue pot. So we might have to adjust those too if the colors are all off. So now that we have that hooked up, we have power going to it. We have the video connection going to it. We don't know about the sink yet. We'll leave that set there. Now let's grab one of these monitors and we are going to put a VGA cord to it and a power cord. circuit board. Stick that up there for now. Short cord. We'll end up probably putting a power strip. Wrong cord. Oh. Okay, we're going to end up putting a power strip inside the cabinet um, with a surge protector on it. And then the cord coming off of the power strip will come out of the cabinet so it can get plugged into the wall. Okay, our monitor power, VGA cord. Maybe we will, re be, we will be reusing the wiring harness that was plugged into the control panel because these are the other sides of those plugs. So we might as well take advantage of that and plug the control panel in and then it can always be unplugged rather than having to disconnect everything. Okay, now this has an in and an out. So you gotta hook it up to the VGA output. not going to screw it in because it's going to have to get taken apart and put in the cabinet once we get it up and running here. Okay, so we have power and VGA going to the monitor. Set that up here. All right. Plug in the circuit board. Now you gotta be careful with this because this doesn't have a keyway in there. So you gotta make sure you plug it in the right direction. On your JAMA harness here, you have a, a slot right here and there's a key that goes in there on most of these harnesses. Some of them don't have it. But so basically what you have is you have your ground, your five volts of the first two lugs here. So you gotta make sure that you plug it in the right direction. Okay, we're plugged in. We don't have a speaker hooked up. Not worried about that right now. So now we're gonna go ahead and monitor, power up the monitor and the power supply. And I don't expect to see anything on the screen, but you never know, you might get lucky. So let's see if the power supply, it has the both boards are lit with the red LED. Let's see if anything comes up. Okay, it says no signal. Okay, 
let's try, first off, let's try changing the sink wire, which I don't think that'll make a difference either. Maybe. It says the no signal went away. Oh, there it is. Look at that. It's up already. Okay. So we know that the monitor just gets mounted normal. Wish I can hold that thing up there better. Um, obviously the sizing is off. That thing's just not going to sit good. Something I can put behind it. There we go. Okay. Um, we need to adjust our sizing. Colors are actually not going to look that bad, but so basically what we're going to do is we're going to get into the menu of this board. Okay. And it, there's four buttons here in this bottom corner. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, there's a menu, a down, a up, and a switch, SW. So we're going to hit menu, and it's going to take us into here. Let's go to geometry, which is the second one down, geometry. Now, when you get these boards new, this is going to be in uh, Chinese writing. You have to scroll down and then hit enter, and then it'll get you into English. So basically... Um, it'll all be written in Chinese. So if you have to, basically, let me let this turn off real quick. Let me see if you can see this on the camera or not. I might have to turn another light off in here. I think you can see it. Let me zoom in a little bit. I don't want to zoom in too far, but even the colors and everything don't look bad at all. I don't think I have much adjustment to do here because this was already used in a previous game, this converter board, so it's pretty much set up. But anyways, so when you go into menu, when you first get one of these, it's going to, like I said, it's going to be in Chinese writing. So you're going to go, you're going to hit the menu button, and then you're going to count one, two, three, four. When you hit four, then you hit the, uh, I don't know if it's the switch button or the menu. It's the, you, I think you hit the menu button again, and then it'll switch it from Chinese to English. So hopefully that helps. So let's go to geometry here. Now we're going to go to horizontal position, and you can go, oops. So once you click on horizontal position here, you hit the menu button and it'll highlight it in yellow. Once it highlights it in yellow, you can use your up and down to adjust it. Okay, now you see how there's a bunch of picture that's hidden behind the edge of the screen here. So I know that my horizontal size is way too big. So let's go down to horizontal size. Now how to get down to horizontal size is you hit the menu button again it's gonna white that out again, and then we're gonna go down two to horizontal size. We're gonna hit the button, now it's yellow. Now we're gonna go ahead and downsize it. So we're gonna go from 80 down to, let's say 70, let's go to 70. Now we have part of this screen's missing over here, and we have a black bar over there. So let's hit menu again. Let's go back up to eight horizontal position. Okay, now we're gonna start going up around 31. We're gonna start going 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. And now, okay, it's still a little big. So let's go back down to size. Let's take it down to 65. That might be too low, but we'll try it. Go back up to position. Okay, 65 is a little low. So let's go to 68, 68. Back up to position. Sixty-nine. Back up to position. Maybe seventy was okay. No, I like it at sixty-eight. Okay, so we're good there. Now let's go to uh, vertical size. That's getting it bigger. That's smaller, because I think we're missing something at the top of the screen. Let's go to 50 right now. Now, when you get these, they're all gonna be set at like 50. You'll have to go in there and change everything because nothing's gonna be right. So now we're going to, obviously you can't see, now you can see it. We're gonna go to vertical position and we are gonna start bringing it down by increasing the number. And you can see how now it says next because that was off the screen before. Okay, I think 50 is a little too big. Let's go down to 47 and see how that works. Okay, we have a little bit of a slight wave right there on the top of the castle. 
So I think we can get rid of that by going down to 46, moving our position down, and that's pretty good there. That's a little bit of a wiggle up there, and that's what I'm talking about with that. Might need to put a resistor on there. Let's touch the two sink wires together, see if that does anything. Sometimes that'll help, but that's not doing anything. Okay, I still have other ideas. Let's get back in the menu. Let's go to, um, what was it? I think it was geometry still. Yeah, clamp settings. Let's go down to clamp settings. I had them set at 83 and 84 for a different game at one point in time. So normally I think they come 95 and five. If I were to go to back to default settings, so everything's going to disappear for a minute here. Let's go to five on this one. I forget which order it's supposed to go in. Maybe this one's supposed to be at five. I don't remember. Yeah, still got a little bit of a wiggle up there. Okay, and this might be the perfect time for me to figure out what resistor is supposed to be used in line here. And then I can uh, put it on here and see if it works. And then I'll know for my game in the basement if that fixes it. Okay, well, anyways, um, I think I'm going to back these color pots down to the center. I don't have a flathead screwdriver with me. Those are in the center. See how much darker that got? Let's go into the menu here. Let's go down to picture or up to picture. Now we're gonna to go to brightness, contrast. Okay, so brightness, we could probably put it up now. Let's leave it at 90, let's see what contrast does. Leave that at 75. Saturation is how much color. And I could tell right now it needs more saturation because the colors are kind of milky. Yep, we definitely have a wave at the top of that screen. It looks like crap. But that's exactly what I'm talking about. But I have it on the bottom of my screen in the basement. Let's go to sharpness here and see if we can if it gets any better. Yeah, it does. Really blurry, probably can't see that in the camera very much. That's at zero sharpness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ten, I think it looks good. So if you wanted to reset all these, you should go to default and it'll reset it to the factory settings. But I'm pretty happy with the colors there. So we're gonna let this exit out. Um, is there anything else? Uh, display. It's on 800 times 600. There's four different display settings. If you're running a widescreen monitor, let's say for instance, uh, what did I do? I did something wrong. Okay, it's, let's say I wanna go to 640 over 480. It might not even display it. Okay, it's displaying it, but it's all funky. Colors are funky again, so we don't want to use that. Let's try 1024 times 768. Okay. It's not too bad. I'm seeing a bunch of scan lines though in the screen. Let's try 1360. Okay, it's right here. Current input timing is not supported by the monitor display, so it cannot support that uh, setting. So we need to get back in and it bumped us down to a different one. So let's go back to, oh, not geometry. Display. So we're gonna put it on 800 over 600. 800 times 600. That seems to be the best looking one. Okay, um, I think we pretty much had this set up. I'm happy with the way it looks. I think it looks good. Um, oh, it just screwed up. 
Okay, you know why I did that? Because I did not set the display correctly. Now I can't see my arrow off the screen. Shoot. Go to return. One, two, three, should be display. Okay, now we wanna pick this. Okay, now, you need to go to this, the 800, then you need to push on it a second time, I believe. And then hit OK, I think it is. Exit, now it should stay there. I don't know that I'm completely happy with those colors. Oh boy, that's too much red. That looks a little better. Knocking a little bit of that red out of there. Making that gray look a lot grayer. Okay. That looks better. All right, let me do some research real quick before I end this video. Let me see if I can figure out what I need for the resistor on that line, and we're going to try it. So give me a few minutes here to look up some stuff. I'm going to try not to knock over the tripod. I'm going to let it run, make sure the screen doesn't get all funky and do something weird. Okay, I went and found some resistors. I have a couple boxes full of resistors. And when I looked it up, it said to try an 8 to 10K resistor in the sync line. So I went through my packages here, and here is a half watt 10K resistor. So we're going to try that. I don't think we need anything more than a half watt resistor. These are quarter watt resistors, which are smaller. Those would probably work as well, but let's try this and see what it does. Pull one of these out. We're going to disconnect our sync wire. We'll lose picture for a minute. Still have a wiggle up there. So that is not doing anything. Want to make wait for the other screen. Still got a wiggle up there. Do I try a smaller resistor? It said try an 8 to 10K. I mean, it's a little bit better, maybe. Let me see here. I don't know if I have an 8K resistor. A 22K, a 15K, 47. There's ohm ones in here too. 1K. 2K. 2.2. 100K. 5.6K. Let's try 5.6 and see if that does anything. I've never tried this before. Could I, does the resistor go in one direction maybe? Do I have it in backwards? I don't know that that matters, but it could. Let's try that first. Like I said, I've never tried this before, so I don't really know.
No, I'm still doing it. Okay, let's try this smaller one here. Still wiggling. Really like to get rid of that. Okay, let me do some experimenting for a few minutes and then I will be back. Okay, so what I came up with, the resistors were not doing anything. It was still wiggling up there. So I went into the settings again on the board and I went to display and I switched it to 640 over 480. When I did that, obviously the screen was a little bit off in size. So I went back to the... Uh, um, To the geometry and I adjusted my H position, V position, size and everything like that. And now the wiggle is gone. So by changing the display setting I was able to get rid of the wiggle at the top of the screen. Um, now I don't know if there's a very 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 slight wiggle there and I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, actually I could probably move the screen up a hair with geometry, each position. Oh wait, I need a vertical position. Just go up one click maybe. Go to 21, shouldn't cut anything off. Exit out of there. Um, I think the colors all look good. I'm happy with that. Um, it's funny because this is, being on this LCD screen, kind of reminds me of when I played it on my Game Boy back in the day with that little screen. Um, kind of has that same vibe to it, I guess I would say. Uh, I don't, I've never seen this game actually on a CRT monitor, so I don't know what it looks like on a CRT, but that looks great up there now. No wiggling whatsoever. Let's see what happens on that next screen is when you can really tell when it has that orange band with the colorful blocks in the corners. Let's wait for it to get to that, which I believe that's the next screen that it goes to. But this is not wiggling up here anymore. The top of the castle, the top of the arch is not wiggling. Come on. And I'm pretty sure this saves high scores because there's a high score here of 284,305. And I'm pretty sure that that's somebody's high score. And there's actually initials in here. So I'm going to say that this probably does save high scores. <clears throat> Why is it not going to that orange screen? Come on. Guess it's not going to now. Don't know why it was, and now it's not. We'll let it play for another minute and see what it does. But this has been running now for probably close to a half an hour. Nothing's screwing up. The converter board's not screwing up after. Sometimes the converter board, after so many minutes, it starts screwing up the picture, and you have to readjust some things. But in this case, it's not doing anything. So this makes me wonder is, do I need a resistor in line for my sink, or do I need to just do a different monitor setting on my... Um, Simpsons bowling game. So I will have to go into there and take a look at that and see if I can't fix it. I really want to go to that stupid orange screen. I don't know why it's not doing it. It's probably not going to now. Guess it's not going to. Don't know why it was before, now it's not. Um, 
So I'm gonna need one more crimp connector to put onto this sink wire. Let me do that real quick. Okay. There it is. And we are good. I don't see any wiggling. So I am happy with that. So I think I'm gonna wrap up this video now. It's gonna shrink tube this last connector here. And then um, the next video, we are going to figure out how we wanna mount the monitor, get the power supply mounted in there. We need to run power for the um, marquee light, which he did give me the original marquee light setup. So, I don't know what I want to use for a bulb yet. I don't know if I just want to use a traditional screw-in bulb and not use that because in a way for somebody who doesn't really work on games and stuff and it's a lot easier to just get a screw-in LED bulb than it is to find a fluorescent tube. Um, so I might just put a regular bulb in there and if I do I'm going to use the metal plate from my cabinet because it already has been converted to a regular bulb. I'll show you that real quick. But somebody has already done a conversion to it, which I might have to fix the way it's sitting. But see, somebody had changed it already to that. And I'm pretty sure this one was in my cabinet. Yeah, this had to be in my cabinet. So we might use that on that one. I'm not sure yet because there's only one light bulb. Maybe I'll just take it out and put a newer LED light strip in there and I don't have to worry about it forever. Probably last for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So basically now I need to figure out how I'm going to get that monitor in here. Got to get it situated in here. Pretty much want to have it centered in here. I think what I'm probably going to do is I might just put a piece of plywood back here and then screw the monitor in through the plywood from the backside. And that would be a real simple, easy thing to do. Just run a couple cleats down here on each side, put a solid piece of plywood. It doesn't even need to be a whole piece of plywood, really. Just big enough to uh, accommodate the back of this monitor here where these, uh, where it screws in to the original uh, mount right there. So I think I'm probably gonna do that. But, all right, guys, well, that's going to end this video. It is a working game. So now we just need to get it all in the cabinet and get it wrapped up. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Um, if you like what you're seeing, please like, subscribe, and share. Hit the thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Um, once we get all this stuff mounted in here, I still need to clean up the coin doors and get those back on there. And we need to do the marquee and stuff. Um, so we do still do have a little bit to go, but we are definitely heading in the right direction. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.